Question 4 says a 220 kilogram load is hung on a wire of length 3.3 meters cross-sectional area of 2 times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared and a Young's modulus of 8 times 10 to the tenth newtons per meter squared. What is the increase in the length? So this is what we're given. We're given the um, we're given the mass, which we can find the force from the mass uh, by times get by the by gravity 9.8 meters per second squared. We're given the original length, and I'm going to call length L1. The book calls it L0. So um, L the the length is 3.3 meters originally. The cross sectional area. So if you're looking at a rope, this is or any kind of kind of string of rope. So this is the rope, and then if you cut it in half right here, the area in that. Uh, so if you're looking down at it, this would be the the cross sectional. Um, it would be the radius times uh, pi squared. Pi r squared would be this cross sectional area. So it gives us that area of basically how wide the, the rope is. And then a, a Young's modulus, which the Young's modulus just tells us how easy or how hard it is to stretch. And so we need to talk about the difference between tensile stress and tensile strain. So tensile stress is the, the force divided by the, the cross-sectional area. So whatever, you, if you have... 500 newtons hanging on something and its cross-sectional area is let's say it's a a really thick cable and it's a half a square meter so 0.5 square meters so the stress would be really low the stress only tells you how much force is acting over a given area and that's all and so the units are in newtons per meter squared strain is is uh is a little bit different so strain is the change in the length of it of a thing whether it be a rope or a or a piece of floss or whatever it is the change in the length divided by the original length and what's been determined is that the the stress the stress is is proportional to the strain so so we can find out how much it's been strained by setting up the equation the the stress equals Young's modulus times the strain. And since our length is in meters and our original our change in length, they're both in meters, so this is going to become a dimensionless quantity. That means that uh, the the dimensions of the Young's modulus has to be um, has to be newtons per meter squared, which is the same thing as a Pascal. And one other thing that's worth mentioning is the relationship to a spring. So we have our, our ratio of uh, stress and strain. And so if you remember that a spring, a spring's, um, you could calculate the force of a spring by negative k times the change of x, or we could call the change of x the change of L. And we can actually rearrange our equation here to make it look as if it's a spring. And so what we would do is we would say the force over the area equals Young's modulus over the original length times the change in length. And then we could multiply both sides by A and we would get force equals uh, Young's modulus times the area divided by the original length times the change in length. And so our negative k would be this, um, would, would be Young's modulus times the area times the, or over the original length. And so it takes the form of our equation for the force um, of a spring. And the main reason to point that out is just because it, it may help you remember it. It, it actually helps uh, me think of, so it helps me not only remember the, the equation for the force of a spring, but tying the two together gives my brain something to connect. So we need to solve for our change in length. So we get that the force over the area equals Young's modulus times the change in length over L1. And we can, we can multiply both sides by L1. So L1 times the force over the area equals Young's modulus times the change in length. And finally, divide by Young's modulus, and you'll get that the change in length equals the original length times the force divided by the area times the Young's modulus. So now all we need to do is plug in our numbers and we get that the the length was 3.3 meters the force was it was uh, 220 times 9.8 we divide that by the area was 2 times 10 to the negative fifth and the 
Young's modulus was 8 times 10 to the 10th. And you can see by the Young's modulus being on the bottom that the larger the Young's modulus you have, the less likely it is to um, the less likely it is to stretch, or the the less it will stretch. The change in length. So the change in length here. So the higher this number is, the smaller this number is going to be. You just plug all those numbers into your calculator, and what you're going to get is 0, 0.0. So you get um, you get 0 0.0044475. And uh, but it wants the answer in millimeters, and this is in me meters. So you have to times it by a thousand, move the decimal point to here, so you get 4.44675 uh, millimeters.